Hello and welcome to episode 14 of the Tea in Tokyo podcast. My name is Sonia. And I'm Ellie. And what are we talking about this week, Ellie? So this week we basically just talk about should we stay or should we go? Yeah, that's right. Find out right now. ethics around uh, making sure whether uh, avocados are ripe or not yeah <laughs> what do you mean to do in a supermarket nowadays because in the before times you could touch every avocado and see which one's ripe. yeah, like yeah what do you mean to do it. now because i got an avocado and it's not ripe at all it's and it looks so like it's, far from being ripe yeah it looks like it never will be but I also feel like even before all this you weren't particularly good at getting a good avocados yeah, I never was. That was always your thing. Yeah, you never quite learnt the art of the right squeeze. Yeah, but now I feel like I like avocados more than you, so... Mm, now. Not more than me, that's for sure. But yeah, um, we're struggling with the, you know, the how the rules around how you're meant to get the good avocados at the moment. Yeah, what are you meant to do? You know, you can't touch them all. I think we just, you got to touch them. That's how it works. And then you, everyone's just going to have to wash them when they get home. I guess technically you can, like, the only part that you have to touch is the very top of it, right? Yeah, you could like to push, push that in. little bitty in. But I suspect that, like, if too many people push those little bitties in, mm, yeah, like the little stem bit, like, surely eventually it just becomes squishy there from, like, bruising <laughs> as opposed oh, yeah, to ripeness. True. Like, because apparently if you can take it out easily, that means it's ready. But, like, I remember one time I went to the supermarket in New Zealand and, like, it was after an article about that had been posted, because you could see the colour on the inside if you mm. pop that, like, stem out. And literally every single avocado in the supermarket, that had been, like, popped out, because obviously like, everyone had gone crazy. Yeah. And then it was like, well, now no one else can use that technique, because they're all going rotten. Mm. Okay, well, yeah, so, so that's not going to work then. I guess you just, you do have to just touch them all, and then I reckon clean them. It should be oh, like, do people touch... wash avocados? Is that a thing? I would, I've been washing everything before we use it lately. Oh, really? Yeah, have you not been? No, I haven't been watching. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I suppose maybe there should be a rule about, like, you're allowed to squeeze three, and then if you haven't found a good one by then, no avocados. Yeah, you, you know? yeah. Um, okay, well, have you been noticing anything different in Japan because of coronavirus? Because uh, I've seen so many... Because what I've realised is that we haven't really been leaving the house because we've been trying to self-isolate. Mm. But I've seen a lot of videos uh, posted by people... Uh, showing like streets in middle in the middle of Tokyo that are completely empty because of coronavirus. Uh. But I don't know if I believe those that much because um, when I've been speaking to my students who work, you know, in, in mm. the in the city, they have like in just different jobs or even like in supermarket jobs and things like that. They say that they haven't noticed it slowing down at all, really. Well, yeah, I haven't really noticed it that much. The trains are maybe like one percent less busy yeah you know, i feel like our work is really quiet but like supermarkets are just as busy like family mart is just as busy yeah just as busy you know I, like i'm not really sure i think maybe so for anyone like listening later on we're recording this on the 7th and supposedly um abe is going to announce a is it Abe or Abe? I've never no. I think it's Abe, but I barely know what. I his feel name like is. the Japanese pronunciation <laughs> would be Abe. Anyway, supposedly he's going to announce the a state of emergency, and so I yeah. wonder if after that happens, if things will slow down, or if they'll still continue as normal. Yeah, I don't know. Eh? Surely you'd expect things to slow down, but like j- just from looking at those photos, I thought things had slowed down. But then I had a student yesterday that works at um, Miso. Is it Miso? that uh, electronics and like that big electronics store and well it's not just electronics they sell heaps of things miso 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 or something like that um yeah and she said that hasn't slowed down at all although they did close their shop down over the weekend like we did and apparently um they've stopped production of like nintendo switches or something so you can't find them anywhere like so i suppose things are slowly getting affected like the supermarkets have been pretty empty of like 
rice. Somia made fun of me when I wanted to buy some backup rice. He was like, Ellie, Japan's never going to run out of rice. You're being paranoid. <laughs> but no, there's like no rice in the supermarkets. Yeah, so, I mean, I bought 5 kgs that time though. Yeah, but you made fun of me about it, you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't expecting the rice to run out like that, but it did. But, yeah. then, it, but then it came back. Yeah, it ran out. Because I feel like everyone expected on the 1st of April there was going to be an announcement about a state of emergency then. So we're going to all run out right before that. Yeah, I feel and like now, we've had two of those now where yeah, everyone, there's rumours that there's going to be a lockdown or something and then there just isn't. And then today, well, yesterday we had our latest rumour that there would be a state of emergency called. Uh, and now at this point, everyone knows that uh, a lockdown is not going to happen because that's something that legally just can't happen in, in Japan. Although I still think it's one of those things where like, you could make it legal. Mm. It wouldn't be, like, that hard to, like, make some sort of allowance for, like, biological weirdness. I don't even know the right word. Like, doesn't Germany have <laughs> Biological like? warfare weirdness. Because in, every, like, almost every country's constitution, they have an allowance for freedom of movement, right? But, like, yeah. for example, in Germany, they have a specific, like, protection or whatever for if there is a pathogenological, is that a word, reason? Yeah. So, like, I don't see why every country can't do that, like... Well, I think for Japan for two reasons. Number one is they're they're super afraid to go back to like their authoritarian governments of like mm. the World War Two kind of thing, so they don't want to create l- laws like that. But then the second thing, and um, I've been speaking to people and they're t- talking about how people here respect like the wishes of the government so much that you don't actually have to come up with a law like that. Mm. As long if they told everyone to stay home uh, and made it official through like a standard emergency thing then people would just do it. All it is is just Abe just needs to... just to, He just needs to do it. My concern with that, it not being a fully legal lockdown, is that if businesses can technically stay open, like, how is that going to protect workers and businesses when they lose their income? Yeah, that's the Because the whole... The good thing about... I mean, good thing I say with, like, air quotes about, like, the lockdown in New Zealand, for example, is it's allowed the government to provide financial support for lots of businesses and ensure that employees are getting paid. Mm. Because it's, like, otherwise, obviously, bars and stuff are losing all of their income because they're not essential services. So, like, if it's not official, is there any protection for, like, workers? Well, he has said they are coming up with a, um, a stimulus plan, I guess. Mm. that people can apply for so yeah so i think they will come up with something but the the question is i, th- I think J- japanese people will be looked after but will foreigners be looked after like us yeah i don't know about yeah. that we um, were talking about it last night with our friends um and one of them her husband's japanese so he was reading like the actual japanese news not the translated versions that we get and apparently there is a big group of like very conservative politicians in japan who are trying to push that foreigners should not get financial support because the idea it's like it's this weird illogical thing where they think that this way foreigners will have to go home but it's like there's no flights to get out so is the end goal to just have a bunch of homeless jobless foreigners yeah man conservative there? people ruin it everywhere honestly what I mean, the hell's wrong it's just it's, it's like i feel like there's no true thought has gone into like in this specific situation if you don't support foreigners, like, which makes no sense because you're luring them here with good jobs, specific visas that are sponsored for it. Yeah. And then when they get here, they're paying taxes. We pay health insurance. You can choose to pay pension. But then you're turning around in, like, an emergency and saying, like, no, yeah, sorry, exactly. you need to get out even though there's no flights out. And there's a lot of people like us who are paid um, based on the amount of work they do. And because of coronavirus and because of a possible state of emergency we'll be working less and less we'll have less and less money and yeah the flights just aren't coming we we saw that a cheapish flight to new zealand was in june but i wonder if that would still even be available because i think yeah exactly the problem with a lot of flights that are cheaper especially is they have connecting flights in other countries and there's other countries aren't letting the connecting flights in so it's like like, I've heard about so many people who have booked their flights home and they're being trapped in, like, some random airport because the other, like, the flight on the other end got cancelled. Like, I know I was reading them before the New Zealand government is um, hoping to, like, they've just announced that they're going to have some sort of communication with other countries to see if they can develop, oh, I can't remember what it was called, the word that they used, but basically to allow New Zealanders to have passage through their country. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
like through like through their country and then in turn New Zealand will allow other countries to pass through New Zealand. Specifically yeah. apparently this affects people who are stuck in the Pacific Islands. They need to go through Auckland to get the main flight to their right, country. Yeah. So apparently there's talks of that happening, which is kind of good to know for us. Yeah, for sure. I wonder if if you're like in a desperate situation where you're you know, you literally don't have any money coming in from your work. So you're not able to go back home and you're not able to pay rent here. I wonder if you can you can we just go to the New Zealand embassy and be like, well, what the hell are we meant to do? Like, do they legally have to just be like, all right, well, you know, we'll get a military plane here for you. I don't know if that's how it works. I feel I like know, we're adults. Work? Like we put ourselves in the situation. I mean, we're for, we're very fortunate. Me and Sophie are both very like privileged, and I know some people don't like the word privileged, but it is privileged in that we have supportive families back home who if it came down to it I'm sure they would pull their money to get yeah. us back to New Zealand yeah, which is not true. something we would ever want to rely on because you don't want to be a burden but we're very lucky that we know that we have that option yeah and like what do people do that don't have that option yeah exactly you know, in Japan I wonder not even in Japan just like if they're stuck we're not even stuck so we're not stuck in Japan like our situation is that we moved here we spent $20,000 to move here we have a house here we have jobs here we don't want to go back to New Zealand with yeah. our house. We have no jobs. Like, it doesn't make sense. We'd just be like a burden. But other people were in that same situation. And they may want to go home because even though they spend that money, and it's not all about money, but it's also about, like, this is where our life is right now. But, like, how about Yeah, this is our actual, like, homes now. Yeah. Like, how about those people who want to move home but just, like, can't? Yeah. You know what? When we're not part of any New Zealand... In New, like Kiwis in Japan group or something. Maybe we should uh, be a part of some of I that. I looked up one on Facebook because I thought about joining one. But it was literally like, I don't know if it was originally for expats in Japan. Yeah. But it was fully taken over by when the Rugby World Cup happened. Oh, like, right. A bunch of, of New Zealanders joined it. So it was only to do with like, yeah. oh, who's going to this game? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, right. damn it. This isn't what I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so that's the thing. Um, we're, we've really been discussing whether we should go back to New Zealand or whether we shouldn't. Yeah. Because in terms of being able to pay rent and just being able to live here, mm. you know, being able to pay our bills and food like and everything like that, <laughs> we're okay until June. So... Like, with our current money that we have aside. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we have enough money to pay rent, like, next month. And then this month, uh, our work paid us, you know, we had, like, a paid leave. Uh, because of coronavirus so we'll have enough money to pay rent for the month after mm. but then in june depending we have to use, on what our income is like over yeah, the next couple of months yeah in june we have to use our pay that we get from this month and so far i have a 4.6 percent booking rate <laughs> Four yeah, it's six. not looking good <laughs> like in the entire month of april and usually you know bookings happen quite late so you know, you won't get a booking three weeks in advance or anything anyway, mm. normally. Like, what was your booking percentage last month for the whole month overall? Well, last month was the weird month again, okay. so... month before that. <laughs> Actually, that, it was like 55%. And true, but that was our first month working there. Yeah, yeah. That's what they said to expect. Yeah. Yeah, in the first couple of months, it's always going to be crap, so mm. I, I wasn't expecting a great percentage anyway. Like, our job says to expect that you'll get, like, a 60% booking rate for your first three months. Yeah. And then after that, it will probably go up to, like, a steady 80%. Yeah, so I was averaging around there, because in the first month, uh, although it, was, um, it wasn't a full month, but my booking percentage was, like, 65%, mm. and then it was 55% the next month, so yeah, it was, like, average 60%. And now it's dropped down to 50. So this entire month, right now, I literally have 12 classes. That's it. So, yeah. you know, that that's not even enough to pay our phone bill. <laughs> yeah, it's not ideal. So right now what I'm doing is I'm booking as many classes as I possibly He's can. He's technically working Every, every day. single day, day and night, I put myself available for. So, for example, the first full month that we had, I think I put myself available for 200 classes. This month, I've put myself available for like 380 or some ridiculous yeah. number to try to get any classes I possibly can. But w w it's definitely made me realize how lucky we are that we came to Japan together because yeah. we can pull our resources together. Yeah. And I feel like two people don't actually use up twice as many resources. Well, like, that's I mean, not how it works. Our rent is still like a single... We have a friend, I'm sure I've mentioned this, we have a friend who lives in a share house, which is basically like kind of like a hostel but a permanent one. Mm. Um, and he pays 80,000 yen a month for his rent. Yeah. For like a single room 
in a big house. We pay a hundred thousand yen for a whole apartment. Yeah, exactly. So like, we're not paying one hundred sixty thousand yen. Like, we don't have double it rent yeah. costs. And same for food as well. I feel like you don't actually end up eating twice as much food. If anything, I feel like there's less wastage of food. Yeah. So. Even in terms of food, you don't actually end up spending double what you would if there was only one person. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, you save money for everything. So, we're pretty lucky that we are um, living together. And also, yeah. I mean, your, your bookings are shit as well, but they're not as shit as mine. Well, mine, mine so that month where Somia had like a 60%, I had 95%. And then yeah. this month, I only have 30%. Yeah. So, it's obviously better than Somia's. Like, I'm not going to pretend that they're the same, <laughs> but like... Like, I think I have 50 bookings this month. Yeah. I, I thought my last last month, uh, in that week and a half that we worked, mm. my percentage was uh, 5.5%. And I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, that's shit. There's no way. like, at, But at least it can't get worse than that. And now it's 4.6%. <laughs> I was like, God damn it. Yeah, it's not not great. So, and I mean, the other problem is, is after our job um, paid us for that three weeks leave when they initially shut down at the government's request when Japan shut down schools. Mm. Um, when we came back to work, we had to sign something to say that we ex- we understood that if we didn't sign it, we'd get no pay if there was a shutdown. But if we did sign it, we'd get paid only for classes that had already been booked. Yeah. And Somya already mentioned that um, most of our classes get booked the night before. That's yeah. how it works. Or at least the week before. Like at the beginning of the week, the students will go through and they'll book their classes for that week coming. So, like, having signed this, I mean, fair enough to the company. They can't continue to pay us full rent forever. But the problem is, is it means that, for example, if we were to shut down, like, if they announce a state of emergency tonight or tomorrow and our company shuts down, we're going to get paid for, like, 60 classes in total. Yeah. Which doesn't, which only covers rent. It wouldn't cover bills. I feel like the rumors are hurting us as well. There's always a rumor that there's going to be a shutdown. And then once that rumor comes out... All, like a lot of our classes get cancelled because yeah. people are worried and then the rumour doesn't end up happening and then people slowly start booking again and then another rumour comes along well like the thing that bugged me was how it was so silly to say oh yeah like the government requested that businesses stay closed on the weekends I yeah, think we really so laughed true. about this last week because it's kind of like what is just the weekend going to do yeah. that's only going to affect businesses that thrive on the weekends like, for us, weekends are normally when we get all of our bookings booked. Yeah. We'll put ourselves available for, like, the whole day, and that's when we make most of our like, money. <laughs> yeah, So, exactly. like, it's kind of a frustrating now that our students know that is... Oh, crap, I said the name of the company. God damn it, again, we do this every week. <laughs> it's frustrating that, like, they know that the government has recommended that we close on weekends, but our company doesn't announce the closure until the Friday before. Yeah. And I think the idea is that way our students will book and then they'll still pay us for the ones that were booked. But our students are kind of catching on to that now. Yeah. And so they're not booking at all for the weekend. So it's like the longer this goes on with the last minute announcement of a weekend closure, the less and less bookings we're going to get on the weekend. Yeah, for sure. Like they haven't announced that we're closing this weekend, but I'm assuming that we will be closed. Like last, so last weekend we closed, I'd say I had like maybe two classes each day not booked. So I had like eight to 10 classes each day booked. Yeah. And the weekend before that, it was all classes booked. This weekend, I've only got like five classes each day booked. I'm guessing the weekend after that, I'm going to have nothing booked. Yeah, for sure. God damn it. So that is our case for <laughs> leaving Japan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because... A very like negative yeah. conversation, but I feel like this is a kind of negative time, Oh, no, right? yeah, for You've sure. You've got to be realistic. Yeah. So, yeah, there's definitely good reasons for us to leave. <laughs> and... Also, in terms of, like, we, we came to Japan because we wanted to explore Japan, right? That was the main thing. It's not like we wanted to teach English super badly. I wanted to teach, but, like, <laughs> we also, yeah, we wanted to... Yeah. The reason we chose Japan is because there was a good way to earn money while you live in the country, teaching English, but you can also explore Japan and, like, Asia from there yeah. with the income you earn. That and, was the whole logic behind Yeah, exactly. It. And now, of course, that's not happening at all. We've been basically self-isolating for like four weeks now mm. um we've been trying to stay home as much as possible so yeah so when when we, we haven't been out exploring anything at all and right now would be the perfect time because it's like cherry blossoms yeah and we're not sure if we should go view the cherry blossoms because technically they've requested that you don't yeah we're so like torn about that <laughs> i feel like we could definitely go to a local park or something mm. because you know you you can go out for walks yeah so we could walk right. to somewhere in Ota. Yeah, yeah. like, going out isn't really the issue. It's whether you're interacting with other people or mm. even just being around other people who are outside of your bubble. 
Uh, so mm. technically we could do that. Although then again, the whole bubble thing goes out the window when we get on a train anyway. Yeah, because like when I catch the train every night from work, for example, I'm always physically touching people around me because yeah. it's so crowded. All right. Um, so yeah, so so those so that's another reason why we should also go. Oh, and, and one thing actually, going back to our pay, is I was talking to one of my managers and he was saying how our head manager, like the top guy that's in charge of the whole company, or at least charge of the workers in the company, mm. uh, he was saying how he's like a foreigner as well. And he, you know, he's, he sort of came up in the same way that we did. He was once an instructor and he hasn't been in Japan for that long. And also that he got this job, he got this like leadership job relatively recently. Mm. And he said that, you know, he, he's known him for a long time and he tr like totally trusts him that he will make sure that we're not uh, screwed over and that, mm. you know, uh, financially will be secure. Well, I mean, he's um, already done some pretty cool stuff. Like, yeah, they, yeah, they announced sure. that if people chose to go home, like, if they felt like they had to return to their home country, um, our company would give them the contract when they came back. Mm. They wouldn't lose their contract. They wouldn't lose any... Um, so you can get, like, pay rises. They wouldn't lose their pay rises. They would come back in the exact same point they were already in. Like, they wouldn't yeah, that's to pretty good. Um, I mean, they said the only issue with that would be, obviously, you'd have to still have a visa to come back. Yeah. But that, if that was the case, that would help you get a visa. Yeah. So that's, like, very, very cool to offer that. To yeah, say, sure. like, we understand you might have to leave. So. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with, with the deal that we have at the moment mm. when, as our work is still open, like, getting paid for classes that we would have had. Mm. Uh, but I feel like if there is a long-term shutdown... Mm then they definitely need to change that a bit because obviously you're not going to have booked classes. Well, some so you're not going to get paid. in my work, some of the other teachers at my work, I was talking with them, and they think that they're probably... like If they were smart, our company would be sourcing webcams right now. Yeah, for sure. Because we can't teach from home online because our students' information has to be secure. The whole appeal of our company is that, like, it's one-on-one -on -one classes... It's like top quality and very good privacy around who you are, around your information. So they don't want us like on our crappy laptops with viruses yeah. teaching. So the rumor is that they're trying to source webcams so that we, the teachers, will still go into the business and teach from our like... Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, from, from our boots. Yeah, but then the, the students will be at home. Yeah, that'd be so smart. And also it's something that they can do because at my, at my office, mm. and it's the only one in Tokyo that does this, but they have five or six um, people working there that actually do webcam. Mm, you can do training to do it specifically, yeah. right? Yeah. So I feel like that's definitely something they could do. They just have to source, like, I think there's something like 30 or 40, um, like, booths to teach from in my office. So yeah. if that's how many there is in the average office, they'll be still trying to source, like, a lot of webcams. Yeah. If so. not for that, I feel like they should just pay it like 50% of your average. Well, I think legally teachers are meant to get paid 65%. But there's like the whole question of whether or not we would apply like be able to be eligible for that because we are contractors. Yeah, true. But like technically that's what the government has like declared that for teachers when a school yeah. is closed they're entitled to at least six I think it was 60 or 65% of their average mm -hmm. pay. I was looking up something that said that the government would give freelancers uh, some benefits during this time mm. but you'd have to prove that your wages have been significantly impacted and it said you could get up to like nine thousand us dollars or something but i guess that depends on you know whether you have whether you're like self-employed and like or whether or not like we could even prove that having only had one real proper month of work before yeah, everything sort of turned to crap and then i read something else that said that you had to be earning less than three million yen a year Mm. Or maybe it was less than that. Maybe it was two million yen or something, which we wouldn't be. We would be earning more than that, right? Would we? I think. What's well, two hundred and fifty thousand times twelve? That's um, how we go. Eight is two million. Twelve. Oh, that's three million. Oh yeah. So technically, yeah. the what we're meant to be earning is three million, but yeah. we never we haven't actually reached that yet. So yeah, true. So we should qualify for it, hopefully. Yeah. It's so we'll, yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Um. So yeah. So that's that's all the reasons that we should go, <laughs> yeah. uh, and the reasons we should stay. Well, I guess we've kind of touched on that already. It's just the fact that this is literally the place that we live now. Well, there's like <laughs> I feel like there's two main reasons. There's the one which is like the very practical one of we have jobs here, even if we're not getting much money. We have a home here. 
we have made new friends here. Yeah. But, like, my mum said when I was speaking to her the other day, like, you can't just look at it from, like, a financial or practical, like, stance. So, like, the second reason is kind of like a, I don't know, like an emotional or mental thing of we made the decision to move here. Unless everything turns horrible, unless it's like The Walking Dead, I feel like we'd be quitting if we left, you know? Yeah, there's that sense, I guess, for sure. Like, that's not like a huge mm. reason, but it's I think it's like a slight thing of... I don't really want to run away as soon as there's like trouble. I don't. I don't feel too strongly about that though, just because this is literally the biggest thing that's ever happened in the world. Oh, <laughs> like, I know, I know, I, I yeah. agree. Like in our world, not in the world, but like in our universe. Yeah, still, I reckon this is probably like top ten, right? In terms of the entire world, like stopping. Yeah. Something that impacts everything. So yeah, I wouldn't feel too bad about that. But my main reason for not wanting to go back is that we wouldn't have a job. And it would be so hard to find a job for the next year. Like, we would literally like, be unemployed just sitting at home. I feel my, like, on top of what I was saying, like, the emotional reason, is in terms of anticipating the future, if we went home, like, we would not be able to afford to move back again. Yeah, yeah, Like, that's we right. could not justify spending another $20,000 on moving back again. Yeah, like, no I'd way. much rather buy a house with that money or, like, you know, put a deposit on a house. So, like... Yeah, that's right. This is, this is our one shot. Yeah, this is our yeah. one shot, one opportunity. Like... <laughs> We either do it now, or we never do it. Are they going to keep on saying like lines? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll stop. I don't think the rest of the song is relevant. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, yeah, this this is it. So we we kind of have to stay uh, if we want to continue this. And also, I feel like I've actually been more productive since we moved here than I was back in New Zealand. I feel like I was way too safe in my bubble yeah. in New Zealand. Um, like for example, even this podcast, this is not something that we would have done if we were in New Zealand. Because we'd be too worried about like the judgment from our peers, right? You don't yeah, want to be sure. like that weird person who has a podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. There, and there would be kind of no reason to do it either. It's like, oh, hey, this is a podcast about New Zealand, like the place that I've been living my whole life. <laughs> and it's, it's just, you know, I wouldn't even know what to talk about in that case. Mm. And yeah, when it comes to just other things as well, I feel like because I'm in a new place, it's, it, it's forcing me to sort of try out new things that I never would have done mm. before and i feel like if i go back to new zealand all that would end you know but even down to small stuff right like i think we mentioned in a past podcast that one of our like lame new year's resolutions was to like have less shame when like taking photos yeah for sure and like that's that i think is something is that we can we can do that because we're in a different country and we're able to like we're already outside of our comfort zone yeah. so why not go all out yeah i feel like living in japan um has been great for our mental health yeah, yeah, for sure. You know. We're both fortunate that we have pretty good mental health anyways. Yeah. At like, least. Like, so we're going to be a lot better off uh, because we moved here than if we hadn't, I reckon. Mm. And, and it will be even better if we can stay here. Mm. Um, but, of course, that, like, the thing also is that the decision might be out of our hands. Yeah. You know, which it's I'm not really, of. yeah, sometimes it's not really even a decision that we can make. You know, I mean, if we don't have money, we don't have money. <laughs> like, we have to go back. Yeah, like, if it comes down to it, we're going to make sure we have enough money to get that flight home kind of thing. Yeah. So I think we should, um, we shouldn't feel too bad if we do have to move back. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that, like I said earlier, we're, like, privileged that we have family who we could, like, stay with. Like, you know, my parents or Sonia's parents or, like, my sibling and I don't know about your brother, probably your brother, like, wouldn't begrudge us, like, having to temporarily move in with them while we get yeah, back on our feet. Yeah, no. So that's, like, it's good. It's a nice, it's sort of like we have a safe net. So for now, we can continue to, like, pursue what we want to and stay here. But if everything falls apart, we've got a way to, like, yeah, you know, stay safe. That's all over. Yeah. All right, well, um, that's kind of it, right? Yeah, hopefully, I mean, today or tomorrow, apparently, according to rumour, we're going to find out if there's a state of emergency. Yeah, true. So this is being, like, recorded before that happens, so maybe next time we speak to you, it will be... The world will be completely different again. Yeah. Maybe our work will close, maybe it won't. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Um, but yeah, all right, well, thank you f- uh, for listening. Mm. Um, yeah, we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. All right, bye. Bye.